This episode of Hawk Talk is brought to you by Charbonneau Car Center and Dakota Bank. And welcome back to this week's edition of Hawk Talk. I'm Gunnar Farsfeet. I'm Coulter Hickok. And joining us today is a frequent flyer in the show, Mr. Pete Stanton. Great to have you. Yeah. So, Coach, going back to last week, we have to talk about the eventful trip that we had morning or not Morningside, but Waldorf. Let's go through, you know, the trip and how, you know, weather affected it and the game down there. Yeah, you know, it was uh, de definitely an eventful trip that you guys were on. And, and uh, you know, one of the, I guess the, the number one thing is, is, it, is everybody was safe on the trip and it was a slick road on the way down and, 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 and our, one of our buses, you know, went into the ditch and with a, with a vehicle and fortunately everybody was okay and they got the people uh, to safety after that. and. And then you know we were able to get another bus uh, from Bismarck. It took a while. We tried to get as many of the players and, and uh, party members onto one bus to get to Fargo and try to keep as normal as, as we as we could. And um, you know I guess really it's a credit to our team and the guys that were there. I, I think uh, we really handled it very well. We have a bunch of mature guys on our team, and we just did a really good job of getting through the day, getting out to. Albert Lee, Minnesota, and uh, you know, really did a good job of getting ourselves ready to play the game despite everything that happened. Well, we got a shout out to uh, our trainer, Tim Kreit, our coaches, Russell McCarville and Steve Cook. They were all the first ones on the scene as it happened, so they were the first ones out of the bus. So we really got to give those props to those guys. Yeah. Most definitely, and, and you know, they took charge on that right away, and we had the highway patrol and the first responders out there right away, and those guys did a great job, too. Just as, you know, first of all, the, it was just fortunate that everybody on the bus was safe. Uh, you know, it could have been could have been worse, definitely, and that's always the number one thing. And then, you know, then it's hard to sit and watch as they're cutting open a, a vehicle right next to the bus and, and getting the people to safety. But as I said, it was all fortunate that everybody in the bus was safe, and, and uh, it came out okay with the people involved. and, and like you said everybody did a great job of responding and really remaining calm and and uh, doing a good job I, w I wasn't wasn't on the bus we were actually out ahead and we turned around and got everybody on the bus and then to uh, credit to Harlow's too they got another bus out right away and you know within a couple hours every, everybody was took Fargo and, and safe do you know the result of how the people ended up in the vehicle? No, I, I don't. You know, and that's uh, you know something that uh, you know really they, they can't release that information. Right. But from what it sounded, as I talked to the highway patrol before they left, uh, that that uh, one of the members was was going to be fine, and the other one was still conscious and was doing well. So it appeared that everything was going to be okay. Perfect. Well, good. Well, that's kind of quite the ending, or you know, it's kind of winding down the season to have something like that happen. You now, going back to the beginning of the season, you know, we had. Had that opening game down at Black Hills, and then the home loss to Western. You know, the first time in a long time the Hawks kind of started 0-2, going into conference play. You know, you as a coach and the coaching staff. You know, what was your going to be your game plan going into conference play to kind of well, I, I think just around? I think just staying on course, and you know, we 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 scheduled those two games because we wanted to make sure we played good teams and see where we we're at. And you know, Black Hills is an old rival, and it's a close game, and. You know, and, if, and as you guys know, you look back to those those first two games, and we had had a chance in both those games. You know, we just made too many mistakes. The first game, we, you know, had we were in the red zone multiple times, and, and just didn't really tackle very well, and had a chance to win. And then Western, of course, we were up three scores at one time and two scores at halftime, and and they're a team that's in the playoffs. So we we knew we were capable. Um, we just do, you know had had didn't you know do the things we're typically doing as far as uh, winning that turnover battle the first couple of games and just tackling very well on defense and we started to do that as the season settled in and and and, and I think really you know this last game you know against Waldorf played our best game of the year absolutely so we finally secured the conference championship in presentation Aberdeen South Dakota so does the seventh conference championship feel just as sweet as the first one you know, uh, yeah, oh yeah, you, that never gets old. And and and, I, and a thing that I emphasize to to our team is that um, you know each one is should be special. You know, it shouldn't be about. Yeah, it's great that there were seven in a row, but you know the the, the guys that won the first conference championship you don't really even know the guys that are on this team, and it should be about this team, that this team, this 2021 team, accomplished what they did, and and that that's that's the exciting part about it is that each team kind of takes their journey through this process and this team got it done and that, that's what I was most happy about. 
but since you've been here for all of these seven-time <coughs> conference champions, is there one that just feels a little more sweeter than the other? Well, you know, the one out in Waldorf a, a couple of years ago was was a big one. You know, when you that know was we huge. we come and, and Jeremiah Payne, who uh, you know is our is our uh, punter now, and he'd he kick some, but you know we were we were down and and out in that game, and and had actually I think I believe had. Couple, one extra point blocked and a couple field goals blocked and a field goal missed and and uh, uh, we decided to kick a 42 yard field goal people thought I was crazy on that one but we gave him a one more opportunity and we hit that game winner you know right at the end I think that one was a pretty yeah. it was a pretty special one I was happy to be a part of that team Gunner was also a part <coughs> of that team so we know exactly what you're talking about mm -hmm. so perfect now going into postseason play for the Hawks you know we kind of figured we we're gonna go back to Iowa for the first round of the playoffs did we did we have an idea beforehand, kind of where we'd end up? Not really. We we just figured it. We ripped. To be honest, we thought it would be one of the other two Iowa teams. Uh, we thought it would be Northwestern or Morningside. I mean, we talked about Grandview possibly, but you know, it had been traditionally been one of those two, and and then they ended up, uh, you know, with Grandview, they're ranked two, three, and four, and and uh, so you know, we just depending on how the the seating was going to go on our side, that that we ended up at, at Grandview. So since this is the first time the Hawks have ever played Grandview, what can the fans expect watching this game? You know, look at the Dickinson State teams from the 1990s and the 1980s, and it's a lot like that for the people out there that watch those teams. They're a team offensively that is big and physical and likes to run the football and hits you with play action passes, and, they, and they're a very good defensive team. They hang their hat on, we're going to play great defense. Uh, we're not going to turn the ball over in offense. We're going to control the ball. We're going to control the clock. You don't you not see a lot of teams in college football now that get under center and run the football and run the play action pass, but this team does. Now they will get into shotgun some, but they are very good on special teams, very good on defense, athletic, and that's what that's what we're going to get. Their team that their program hasn't been around that long. You know, I think I believe 2007 is when the program started. And uh, you know they won a national championship in 2013. They're in Des Moines, which is a, you know, obviously a heavy populated area, and they were they've had a lot of good players, and they've been a frequent uh, playoff participant the last several years. Right, yeah, it's going to be interesting to see that old style of football that mm -hmm. people don't usually see. Now this year, um, with the seating that everything worked in the bracket and the tournament this year, did they change anything? Well, the biggest change was they tried to go seating as close as they could the last couple of years, uh, meaning that it wasn't necessarily the 16th team had to go to the one team, but like in this year, for example, Western Montana was the 16th seeded team, and uh, you know so they did go to Lindsey Wilson because they had to fly anyway, but they tried to keep it as close as they can, and just so people know how that works, is the, the conference winners, there's 12 conferences, and so the conference winners get into the playoffs as long as they're in the top 20, which Western Montana was very close. Um, so then there's 12, there, there's the top 12 teams there, then there's four more teams that get in. They keep one through four seated, just like they are seated in the coaches poll, and then what they try to do then is reseed number five through 16 as close as they can. Now sometimes that doesn't work out because you, you don't want to play two teams in the same conference or you don't want to fly three teams the first round if you can, but that's generally how, how it works. Perfect. Now for the people that may not know, because there's, you know, everyone talks about flying to playoff games. Is there a certain kind of radius that you have to be out of to fly? Yeah, under 800 miles, and of course I believe we're 746 or 756, something like that. So under 800 miles, then you're expected to drive. And and like I told our team on Sunday, it's the same path we took last week, uh, and just add about 90 more miles on top of it. So we're used to that, but that's how it is if it's over 800 miles. For instance, in 2017 when we flew out to to Southern Oregon, obviously way over 800 miles. In that's what's Western Montana. So I believe there's two teams flying. There's Ottawa, Arizona, and Western Montana flying this week. And that won't be a problem. The Hawks love playing on the road. We no, we've done that before. I think we're pretty well battle tested on that. You know, we're used to traveling. We've done that a lot. You know, we go to Madison. We've gone to Northwestern last spring. We've gone to Morningside. We've we've driven to. Uh, Selena, Kansas. So I, I think our guys understand that, and, and we've done a good job of traveling well and, and understanding that whole thing. And sometimes we've even gone to games where they had no refs. Yes, we did that. I mean, we did that at presentation, and once again, I think our guys really handled that well. There was a mix up on the refs, uh, referees at that game, and, and uh, had it delayed by three hours, which is really hard when your team's ready to play and you're 15 minutes away, and then all of a sudden now you got to wait for three hours. But once again, Credit to our team for for adjusting and and uh, those those things I'm gonna say those things happen they just don't happen very often with the, with the one you talked about. Very well said. 
So, Coach, you are the one who has answered this question the most out of anybody we've ever had on Hawk Talk, but we love hearing your answer so much, we want to ask you again, <laughs> what does DSU mean to you? Well, it's a special place, um, you know, here at Dickinson State, and it's, you know, it's, it's, all, it's the university, you know, and, and, and the connection that the university has to the community, and, and, and I think, you know, for me it's easy because, you know, somewhere where I went to college, you know, uh, you know several years ago, but uh, the connection that that our family has and that our that our team has and I, and I think one thing that you know you see you, you don't see everywhere else is just the support you know and I'm not just talking with for athletics but for all the way across the board that our community leaders and people support our university so much and then you know when you look at the athletic side of it and what we have going on and you guys have been a part of the you know the having your hawk talk at the tailgates and we just don't see anything like that friend we go down to Grandview this weekend and their athletic director said we really don't even have tailgating we don't have you know that type of thing and the atmosphere that we have and the, the passion and support is just unmatched and, and so then it's easy to get motivated to to really do well in, in your field when you have such passionate supporters well coach like we always say it's a very well said answer by a very well said man so coach thank you very much for coming on it's been a lot of fun always love having you on coach thanks for having me guys and good job on the first time out way to go Welcome back, Hawk Talk fans. My name is Kiara Schneider, and with me today, I have a super special guest. We have a new hire here at DSU. Her name is Mackenzie Hicks, and she is an alum. I'll let you introduce yourself with your name, where you're from, and what you do here at Dickinson State. Hi, everyone. So like she said, I'm Mackenzie Hicks. I am originally from Hedinger, North Dakota, so just right down the road. I was a composite music education student on here, so if you were here during my time, um, or staff and faculty. I was in a lot of the choirs, the performances, things like that. And then I am now the new campus activities coordinator. Awesome. Well, we're super fortunate to have you and excited that you're yeah. here. Speaking of you coming into this position, what was the motivation for you to apply for that position particularly? So my life's been kind of crazy the last couple months. Um, like I said, I was from Hedinger. I went back home and I taught for a couple of years. Wow. I taught music down there, which was great. I absolutely loved it. And then I just knew I needed something a little bit different in my life. Um, so that took me to Bismarck for a couple months, worked at a music store there. Unfortunately, that music store closed down, um, which made me look for a new job. Yep. And. I tr when I say that I truly loved my time at Dickinson, I swear it's not just a face. Um, I really loved when I was a student here. And so kind of having that knowledge in the back of my mind, I looked in the area on what was here, and then I saw that this position was open. And actually the first thing I did before I applied was I called my sister, who is a student here, and I said, hey, would you be okay if I applied, because what yeah. happens if I get it? Are you okay if I start working there? Yeah. And she's like, Kenzie, you'd be perfect for this Aww. job. And so that for me made me super happy that she was supportive of it. But when during my time as a student, I was really active in residence life and campus programming. And so I loved my time doing that. And I love being creative. And so to just come back and be able to do that again, but in a different capacity, it made me really excited for this position. Well, great. I'm super happy you're here and looking forward to everything that we'll get to do yeah. with you and see you do in the future. Yes. So you are a DSU alum. Yep. You graduated in 2018. Yes. Since then, what has all changed? Honestly, the biggest changes have been where offices are. Like, I've, I've only been back for a couple weeks, but to me, the business office used to be the main floor of May Hall. Mm -hmm. And now that I have to go to like the second floor or and part of the third floor to go get figure some things out, yeah. that really tripping you out me. a little bit. Yes. 
And so that has been honestly like one of the biggest changes for me. It's just where, where are some of the new locations for people? And honestly, for a lot of them, in my mind, in my opinion, a lot of those location changes make sense on where people okay. are. I think it's great that admissions is on that main level of May Hall and that section. Um, and yeah, I'm excited where my location is at now. So that's been the biggest change. Speaking of that, do you want to tell what, where are you located? Where can the students find you? Yeah, I am located in the Student Center on the first floor, or the main floor, you know. <laughs> um, the room number is technically 113. It's the Office of Student Life. I am located in there, and then our new Director of Student Life is also located in there. Well, great. Well, now we know where to find you, yes. so it'll be awesome. So just a little bit about you. You were involved in Fine and Performing Arts yeah. in your time at DSU. Is there one specific production that was most memorable to you and why? So I'm going to give you two of them. Okay. So uh, production would be uh, we did the musical Bark mm -hmm. and it was all about dogs. Um, that's what our characters were, were dogs. Oh my goodness. Mine was a poodle who loved <laughs> to sing opera and our director. That sounds amazing. Yes, <laughs> it was. Our director, like the casting for it was literally perfect. The dogs literally matched all of our personalities. Um, I definitely love to sing opera and sing all that fun high stuff, which some people find intimidating and no, don't you like. Got it. No, I love that. Right into it. Did yes. you get to like poof, like curl your hair? I really? did, and it was great. Um, oh my gosh! And so as a production, that was my favorite. We'll have to one. find some pictures from oh, that. Yeah. Talk to Jarvis. Okay, <laughs> I bet he still has some. Um, and then my senior year, as a music major, you have to put on a recital. And so my senior vocal recital is something that I'm most proud of. Mm -hmm. um, so for music majors, if you're a vocalist, you have to put on this recital and it has to be about 45 minutes to an hour long. Wow. Um, and you memorize your music. Wow. So math majors, science majors, they memorize like equations and that kind of stuff, which I'm very jealous for that because I'm not a math or science person. <laughs> For a music major, you memorize foreign languages and then you have to sing them. So wow. uh, me to memorize uh, different French songs and then just perform them. That's insane. Th that's what we did. And so my senior recital, super proud of. Mm -hmm. It went great and I had a lot of support from uh, my hometown of Pettinger. A lot of people came up and then just the support from the Dickinson community were there as well. Wow, that's really impressive. Mm -hmm. and I can see why memorizing and performing <laughs> 45 minutes to an hour of French or whatever foreign yep. language would be a memorable experience yes. for you. <laughs> so moving into your career now, mm -hmm. is there something that you can take away from Dickinson State that really impacted something that happened along yeah. the way? Yeah. Um, so I mean, when I was teaching my education courses, of course, um, a lot of that, but honestly the biggest thing I took away has been my time management and mm. how I organize. So I was busy on campus all the time. I was a full-time student, had 18 plus credits majority of my semesters, and then on top of being an RA, being in CAB and uh, some other um, clubs, organizations. And so to do that and be, I, I was very proud of my grades, and so to keep those good grades, you, know, you have to organize your life. Um, I'm proud that during, I was here for five years, during those five years, I only pulled three all-nighters. So I'm wow. actually proud of myself for that. Um, but time management has seriously been like my saving grace for so many things in my work life and just my life in general, mm -hmm. time management. Awesome. So here on Hawk Talk, we like to do some goofy questions. Kay. So I have two for you today. Kay. So my first question for you is cereal a soup? No. No? No. Do you have an answer why or why not? Um, to me, soup is hot. I know that there are some cold soups out there, but to me, soup is hot. And then you have like meat, vegetables, that kind of stuff in it. So, yeah. cereal, no. Cereal, cereal. Not a soup. Okay. <laughs> Understandable. I like that answer. <laughs> My other question for you is what is the most ridiculous fact that you know? <laughs> So, a side tidbit about me, um, our family raises goats. We raise <gasps> four goats. What? And so, uh, my sister is the one who started all of that. And so, through her, I've learned a lot of random goat facts. The gestation period for a goat, which is how long are they pregnant, is 150 days. 
Wow. So, yeah, that, that's my ridiculous fact. Did you get to spend <laughs> a lot of time with pregnant goats? Oh, yes. Yeah. So we spent quite a few years. Um, right now, a good chunk of her goats are bred, and they'll be breeding and kidding in early December or late December, early January, and a couple into February. Cool. Well, look, I've said it three times, but I'll say it again. We're so fortunate to have you, and I'm excited for everything we'll get yes. to see you do. So our closing question and kind of the staple question we have here on Hawk Talk, what does DSU mean to you? It's going to sound super cliche. <laughs> I know. Um, to me, DSU is family and community. And if I truly didn't believe that, I wouldn't be back mm -hmm. here. Um, I think that speaks for itself. I remember when I was a freshman, my first weekend here, they were giving us the spiel about DSU and uh, I believe it was Alicia Erickson from the foundation told me the whole once a blue hawk always a blue hawk and I thought that phrase was just so silly at that point but as I was here and then even once I left I had professors contacting me I was contacting professors about different questions and then even now I mean I've been out of DSU as a student coming on four years now mm -hmm and to be back and I've had so many staff and faculty be like we're so excited to have you back we're excited for you in this position to me that shows just how much caring and family ties that there are here and I just think that's great for this university definitely I agree the people here want to see you succeed and they'll do what it takes yes. to get you there yeah so thank you so much for your time thank and you being for on having with me, me today it's been great it was really fun thank you it was really great Hawk Talk fans and students, make sure to find Mackenzie Hicks, Student Senate Room 113, and we'll catch you right back after this break. Welcome back for the recap. As you can see, we brought in Hillary. Uh, Kiera, she had some stuff going on today, so she wasn't able to be a part of this. The f we wanted the four hosts to be on, but we just hope everything's okay with Kiera. But we got to get right in the recap. So basketball, a lot of things happened for basketball. So the Hawks had a solid weekend for the JV women's. Uh, they were the only ones to have uh, kind of wins on this uh, the weekend. They won against uh, the Rocky Mountain College Batlin Bears in Billings, Montana. They went 2-0 and on the weekend. While the men's, they were at home this weekend against the Batlin Bears in Scott Gym. Doesn't really have an alliteration to it. Uh, Hillary really enjoyed the alliteration part, mm -hmm. but she didn't want to say Batlin, so that's why I'm reading the basketball part. Yesterday, the Hawks went on the road, both to Minot, men's and women's. Unfortunately, both of those teams lost. The men's lost 90, 99 to 70, 76, and the women's lost 62 to 54. So we're just like as you and Kiera both interviewed Selvig and Nelson, they said that their preseason schedule is probably the toughest it's ever been. Mm -hmm. So we're really hoping for that conference play to come around and hopefully get those W's that the Hawks are really wanting to see. So the JV women's, uh, the JV women's team, they're going to play the United Tribes Technical College. They played that yesterday. You can check the scores on the DSU Blue Hawk site. And then the men's, they're going to head over to Jamestown. You can also find those scores on the DSU Blue Hawk site. For wrestling, the Blue Hawk wrestlers have their blue and gray tournament coming up um, in Scott Gymnasium at 5 p.m., so check that out on Thursday. Uh, for cross country, the Hawks are headed to the national meet in Vancouver, Washington. The women's team finished with the first overall finish at the conference tournament, which got them the automatic bid into the national meet. And then I do believe we have one male runner representing DSU at the national tournament. So yes. that'll be very exciting. Good luck to all of them who are competing. And going on to football, winding down the season in November, you know, football in November is the best time of the year. So the Hawks, they traveled to Four City, Iowa to take on the Waldorf Warriors this past weekend. Uh, dealt with some unforeseen circumstances, some bad roads. Uh, one of the bus actually had an accident. Everyone, all parties involved are just fine. That did not affect the Hawks. However, they went on to win the game 48-7. Uh, to 7. Uh, All three phases of the game, offense, defense, special teams, played a fantastic game. Um, that finish uh, bumped us in the polls from number 19 to 14, which ended us get getting the Hawks seated in the postseason playoffs against number three Grandview in Des Moines, Iowa this weekend. 
Um, this is going to be an exciting game for the Hawks, number one for the postseason, but we've also never played Grandview before. It's going to be very exciting. Also, Chase Johnson, second time in a week, or two, two time, so back to back weeks, he's the special teams player of the week. I was trying yeah. to get that out. Two weeks in a row. Wasn't really sure how that was going to come out. You know, sometimes my brain just thinks of words and my tongue just knocks it out of the park. It's okay. not even thought about. Yeah, hammer Jays. <laughs> we'll forgive you. We had just had Give Day over at the DSU Heritage Foundation our last week episode. We interviewed Myron Moore about that, and it was a great success. I know Coulter and I were able to stop by and help out and be part of it. Uh, Myron Moore, Kelly Richardson, Kiera Schneider, and everyone who helped out really did a great job. Yeah, everybody at the foundation did an awesome job. I know Myron took a whole year just to get this one day mm -hmm. figured out, so really happy for him. Uh, it's, I think it's going to be very successful down the years. Yeah, it was really great to be a part of, to see all the people who stopped by and all the donors who helped make it possible. It was really exciting. And I know that on November 30th, it's another Tuesday, will be the Give Back Day, which Myron talked about a little bit on our um, interview last week. But that's where they'll kind of do the same thing, where people were able to come give to the foundation. The foundation is going to go out into the community and give back with delivering food and cards, I believe. So, yeah, just a, a big thank you and congratulations to everyone who was involved in Give Day. It went really well. It was it really did. exciting to you be can, a part of the first If ever. you follow us on our social media, as you can see all those pictures, on our mm -hmm. Twitter, at DSU Heritage Fund, and our Instagram, at DSU Foundation. We were going live yesterday. Uh, we had Abby Clute. She was taking all sorts of pictures. We even had Buster Blue Hawk there. It was really awesome to see. Had a lot of people stop by, get that hot chocolate, cocoa. Those are the same things, coffee and <laughs> cider. Uh, so it was really great to see. Yeah, so thank you to everyone who donated, and hopefully we'll see you all next year for uh, another successful gift day. Well, Gunnar, this is your first episode this year. What do you think? Oh, it's a lot of fun to be back. So whenever football is done, we're really hoping that we get a W this weekend. Uh, knock on wood. But yeah. we're really hoping that you can join, uh, even get some interviews with Hillary and Kiera in. We'd really love that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it'll be fun. That off season will be a mm -hmm. lot of fun. So. Excited to have you back. Yeah. Yep. Thank you to everybody who supports us. But until next week, Hawks, Hawks are, are out. out.